everyone this is your friend sg and in today's video we will be covering the interview questions that could be asked related to life cycle methods in react so this is the fourth part of the series if you haven't watched the previous parts where we covered jsx virtual down and basic react questions go check out the links you can find the video links in my dis in the description and in the i button as well okay so let's just begin the video and start the questions so the very first question is what are life cycle methods explain each component has several life cycle methods that we can use to run at a run the code at a particular time in the life cycle of that component life cycle methods are only defined for a class component so what are life cycle methods first thing that we need to keep in mind that life cycle methods are only defined for a class component okay now what are they so these are different methods which could be called in the complete in the entire life of a component so from its birth to its destruction these these methods are called at different phases okay react life cycle methods could be considered a series of events that happen from the birth of react component to its death yes so this entire life of a component can be divided into three phases first is the mounting it is the birth of the component second is updating it is the growth of the component and third is the unmounting it is the death of the component so these are all the methods that are called at different per, that, that are called at different interval from the birth to the death of the component okay there is another uh, phase of this series phase of this life cycle methods that is error handling but it is not actually considered inside of this so inside this life cycle so we'll get to know about this but uh, if you are asked this question in interview that explain life cycle methods then don't consider error handling in this okay so life cycle methods which methods are there in the mounting phase we have four constructor get derived state from props render and component did mount in updating phase we have five get derived state from props should component update render get snapshot before update and component did update in the unmounting phase we have component will unmount and in the error handling phase we have get derived state from error okay so this is a diagrammatic representation of those methods now in the mounting phase we have constructor and render render also is used in the updating phase then after that react updates storm and all the references and after that in mounting phase component did mount is called in the updating phase component did update is called okay apart from them apart from these there are some other uh, other life cycle methods as well but they are not that much common so they are not represented here okay and then in the unmounting phase component will unmount is called so now what are different life cycle methods explain them in order explain them in order okay keep this thing in mind that from now onwards all the methods that we'll be covering they will be in the order that they are called okay in the life cycle of a component these methods are called in this order only that we'll be studying them okay so the very first one is constructor it comes in the mounting phase constructor for a react component is called before the component is mounted okay before the component is updated before the component is added in the uh, document object model tree dom tree constructor method is called constructors are used only for two purposes first initializing local state by assigning an object to this dot state and second binding event handler methods to an instance okay so we saw that the life cycle methods are only defined for class components now as this is a class component so class also have a constructor so this is that constructor method okay super props is called before any or uh, any other statement in the constructor not doing so not doing so will make this dot props as undefined okay so if we don't use super props then this dot props will be undefined and we won't be able to use the props so if you have to use props if you want to use props then inside the constructor called super props okay constructor is the only place where we can assign this dot state directly at all other places we have to use this dot set state if we want to update the state then inside the constructor we can do that directly using this dot state and then the name but apart from this constructor at any place inside the component if we want to update the state then we have to call this dot set state okay and why is this so we'll get to learn that in the further videos okay when we'll be covering these states now the next method is component did mount it also comes in the mounting phase component did is mount component did mount is invoked immediately after a component is mounted that is inserted into the tree this method is a good place to set up any subscriptions but if we do that we have to unsubscribe to them as well in the component will unmount if we need to load any data from a remote endpoint then it could be done here but that will trigger an extra rendering so use it cautiously okay so what will happen is as the name suggests component did mount 
So once the component is added inside the document object model tree, then this method is called. Now this last point, it suggests that we can make any changes. Let's say we called an API, got some data and now we update that data into the state. We could do that inside here, but keep this thing in mind that uh, uh, that thing that updating of the state will again call the render okay so it will trigger an extra rendering so use this thing cautiously okay again extra rendering it will although the time that it will cost us it will be very very small it will be very less but still it will call calls us some extra time so we need to use it cautiously okay consciously now next method is get derived state from props it also comes inside the mounting phase it is invoked right before calling the render method both on the initial mount and of the subsequent updates it returns an object to update the state or none to update nothing okay so it will return as an object and based on that object will update the state if nothing is returned then you won't update the state this method is used where the state depends on changes in the props over time okay so if a state it depends on the changes in the props some changes are performed in the props and based on those changes a state needs to be updated then that update will be performed inside get derived state from props. It is a static method that takes updated props and the current state as argument. It takes two arguments, the updated props and the current state. Okay. And based on the updated props, we can update the current state. This method is fired on every render regardless of the cause. Okay. Each time the component is rendered, this method will be fired. Either it's the initial render or the render after each update. Okay. This method will be called each time. So next comes the render method in the mounting phase. This is a required method in a class component. This is a required method. Without this, class components won't be defined, okay? Anything that is visible to us on the browser is returned by the render method only. So here we can see that render method returns some JSX code, okay? So this JSX code is the one which we see on the browsers. It examines this dot props and this dot state and returns the JSX code to be rendered on the browser. It is a pure component that is it does not modify the component state okay render cannot modify the components state it can only return the jsx code that we want to see on the browser okay it won't update the state of props keep this thing in mind it does not directly interact with browser yes it cannot it only interacts with the virtual dom and further virtual dom updates with that uh yeah, sorry interacts with the actual dom and that actual dom interacts with the browser render does not directly interact with browsers okay it only interacts with virtual dom so now next comes the get snapshot before update in the updating phase. If we see that this the name suggests get snapshot before update. Okay. So in the video of the virtual DOM, we saw the working of virtual DOM and we saw one point that at each moment in while updating the virtual DOM, React maintains two DOMs. Okay. Two virtual DOMs. One is the before updates and one is the after update. So this method takes the snapshot of the virtual DOM before update and stores that. Okay snapshot before update is invoked right before the most recently rendered output is committed to the DOM. Okay. Any render is committed to the DOM. Any updated render is committed to the DOM. Before that, get snapshot before update is called. It enables your component to capture some information from the DOM before it is potentially changed. Any value returned by this life cycle method will be passed as a parameter to component did update. We'll see this thing in the coming slides only. This method is rarely used by us. Although React uses it since it's working, but we manually don't use it much. Okay. So it might not be us, but yes, we need to learn this as well. Next is should component update. This thing as well uh, here as well as the name suggests should component update. It tells us that whether we need to render the component again or not. Okay. With the whether the rendering is needed or not. This method tells if Tell, this method tells react if a component's output is affected or not by the current change in state or props. Okay. It gives access to handle the render your own way. It is invoked before rendering when new props or states are being received and returns a boolean value. Based on this boolean value only, we decide that, uh, sorry, not we, the react decide whether the component needs re-rendering or not. It is not called on initial render. Because on the yeah on the initial render we don't have an option to not render the component we need to render it so that's why it is not called on initial renders yes next method is componented update component did update so this method will be called after the component is updated it is immediately invoked after updating occurs this method is not called for initial render yes because in the initial render there is no update 
This method is used to operate on the DOM when the component has been updated. We can update the state or make a network request here, but that should be wrapped inside a condition. Otherwise, it will cause an infinite loop. Infinite loop. Why? So let's say that inside componented update, we updated the state. So now as the state is updated, render will again be called. So render is called. Now render is called. So componented update will again be called. And inside that we updated the state again. So again render, again componented update, then again update in the state. So in this way, an infinite loop is created. So this thing needs to be used very, very carefully. So if we want to prevent that, we can add a condition here. Okay. And based on that condition, that loop will be break, broken. It receives a third parameter snapshot if get snapshot before update has also been used. Okay. If you use get snapshot before update, then it will take the snapshot and it will return that snapshot. And in that method only, we saw that the value that is returned by get snapshot before update, it is received by component date update. So this is what if this method returns some value, then this value will be received by component date update. Okay. Now comes the last method in this structure in the unmounting phase component will unmount. Component will unmount is invoked immediately before a component is unmounted or destroyed. Any necessary cleanups are done in this method, such as cancelling network requests or cleaning up any subscriptions that were created in the componented mount. Set state should never be called in component will unmount because the component will never be re rendered again. Yes, this is the very last method. After this, no render will be performed. So updating state here won't make any changes. Okay, if we want to update the state, then we could call that inside the updating or the mounting phase, not inside the unmounting phase. Okay. Now last comes the error handling. Get derived state from error. This slice cycle method is invoked for after an error has been thrown by the component. Once the component throws some error, it could be any kind of error. Then after then this method is called to handle that error. It receives the error that was thrown at a as a parameter and should return a value of the updated state. Okay, so the value that it returns will be the updated state. So after this method, the state is updated. Okay, error handling. So as the state is updated, the render method will again be called. Yeah. So this is a cycle that continues. Okay, so this is the entire life cycle process. Okay, so the blue ones, they are the mounting. The purple ones, they are the updating phase and the pink one is the unmounting phase. Okay. So the very first thing is constructor at the very beginning constructor is called. So after that componented mount is called. Once the component is mounted, get derived state from props is called and based of that render is called. Now we perform some updates. So get derived state from props is called. So get snapshot before update is called. Now the updates are performed. So we need to call should the component update should the component needs update or not and based on that it returns boolean based on true or false we uh, again call render if true then we again call render if false then we don't call render and based on that componented update is called okay and at the very end component will unmount is called so starting from constructor we go through all the processes all the lifecycle methods ending at component will unmount so this is the entire working of lifecycle methods okay so this is it. We understood everything about lifecycle methods. So if you have any doubts in this, you can ask me in the comments or join my telegram. Okay. You can find the link in the description. Thank you. Tata. Bye. -bye.